There is a woman, she wrote this lengthy piece in The Cut, which is an offshoot of New York Magazine. It has a benign headline. The case for marrying an older man. A woman's life is all work and little rest. An age gap relationship can help. All right, I don't know. Like, I didn't even click on this when I, I was like, oh, whatever. So there's nothing controversial about marrying somebody a little older. Until what? you read the piece. Until you read the piece. Hold on a second, I don't have it. What's her name? We actually looked it up and we have her picture, which will become relevant. <laughs> Grazie Sophia Christie. Grazie Sophia Christie. And um, let me give you and the audience a taste of her argument. In sum, Grazie believes you should marry someone older and you should do it in your 20s so that he can teach you everything you need to know. You can have a divine time while you're young and you can see beautiful places that match your exterior while it's still beautiful because there's a symmetry in that. You need to get to the Caribbean ASAP before your 30th birthday <laughs> by marrying a rich older dude because your pics are gonna look better if you're still pretty, okay? I'm gonna give you a few highlights. When I was 20 and a junior at Harvard, which she gets in there, a series of great mm -hmm. ironies <laughs> began to mock me. I could diligently craft an ideal existence over years and years of sleepless nights and in industry, or I could just <laughs> marry it early. Thanks for taking someone's place at Harvard, grazie. The, uh, the greater and more visible the difference in years and status between a man and a woman, the more it strikes others as transactional, true but she has no problem in actually doing it because I'm 27 now, she says, and most women my age have partners. These days, girls become partners quite young. The problem with a partner, however, is if you're equal in all things, you compromise in all things, and men are too skilled at taking. Okay, she goes on, bear with me. My husband, who's older, struck me as so finished, formed, analyzable for compatibility. He bore the traces of other women who had improved him. My husband isn't my partner. He's my mentor, my lover, and only in certain contexts, my friend. I'll never forget it, how he showed me around our first place like he was introducing me to myself. This is the wine you'll drink, where you'll keep your clothes. We vacation here. This is the other language we'll speak. You'll learn it, and I did. By opting out of partnership in my 20s, I granted myself a kind of compartmentalized, liberating selfishness none of my friends have managed. I am the work in progress, the party we worry about, a surprising dominance. I don't fool myself. My marriage has its cons. There are only so many times one can say thank you, which is literally part of her name, <laughs> according to her, <laughs> her bio. <laughs> for splendid scenes, fine dinners, before that phrase starts to grate. Mostly, I worry that if he ever betrayed me and I had to move on, I would survive, but would find in my humor, my preferences, the way I make coffee or the bed, nothing that he did not teach, change, mold, recompose, or stamp with his initials. There's more, but that's enough. She's for not taking. making the bed. <laughs> she is not making the bed, first of all. <laughs> what is yeah. this? This, this, let me just tell you something. I had a friend who dated an older, an older man who was very wealthy. And one of the things that drove me crazy about the relationship was I said, he keeps trying to make you into his Eliza Doolittle. You're nobody's yeah. Eliza Doolittle. You're a fully formed, strong, independent woman, and you don't need him to show you the wine we're going to drink, the language you'll learn, and you must. What? This is a Harvard student, Bridget, trying to express to us the liberation that comes with being completely submissive and, I guess, losing yourself to a man who's had the luxury of forming his own independent thoughts. Yeah, it's funny. I was in a relationship like this, like in a, in a younger part of my life with an older man who was very wealthy and wanted me to learn French. And we were in Saint-Tropez and I've written a lot about this. And you, they, he, he treated me like a, a, a pet or like a little entertainer. Mm -hmm. You know, he found me very 
very funny, my backpacking ways and my poverty. And they're, she, she's really like the sugardaddy.com generation, only fans. I feel like it's, this is, this is, you're not pitching anything new here. Marrying a rich old guy is like a tale as old as time. This is not something that is revolutionary by any means. I think just her spin on it is a lot of self-delusion. <laughs> Here's the piece that I referenced, MK. Yeah. Very soon, we will decide to have children. And I don't panic over last gasps of fun. This is how like this young generation looks at motherhood uh, because I took so many big breaths of it early on the holidays mm. of someone who had worked a decade longer than I had in beautiful places. When I was young and beautiful, a symmetry I recommend if such a thing as maternal energy exists, mine was never depleted. I spent the last nearly seven years supported more than I support and I am still not as old as my husband was when he met me. So that's oh. the thing. Get out there, as I said, before the elderly age of 28, <laughs> and make sure your beautiful <laughs> selfies have the right background, because when you're ancient, like the three of us on this screen, it's mm -hmm. over. Right. <laughs> There's a I lot mean, of that messaging. Yeah, a lot. Like, I mean, F do your that. thing, girl enjoy but like it's just not my kind of shallow like i'm like hot and no 401k i want over <laughs> older and richer like that's <laughs> fine with me that's why i make a living you know that's yeah. uh, that that freed me up um <laughs> i just think all this messaging by the way that some people seem to think might encourage women voters to vote for the people that they prefer that it's like everything is over when you're 28 and a half. So you better get it done before then. Uh, in my personal life has just not been the case. Uh, I've lived several chapters. Uh, yeah. I've enjoyed all of them. And the idea of uh, making sure that someone else takes care of the first independent chapter of my life doesn't sound appealing to me. I enjoyed finding my way. Yeah. Right. Remember, I mean, being in your young 20s, and being kind of lost and having to pay for your first rent bill. You know, I yeah. remember when I moved to Chicago for law school, I was dirt poor because I was funding my own law school and I didn't have any money. And I literally had an old like love seat that my mother gave me and a mattress that went on the floor and two milk mm -hmm. crates with a TV that had antenna. All right, that's how old I am, yeah. and antenna. <laughs> the milk crates, I was so happy. I had a box wine, what box wine in the fridge. I felt like a grown up. It's there was no one taking care of me. I took care of me. I loved every second of the climb. And she talks about it like it's something to escape, Bridget. Like it's this is you're kind of a loser if you don't take the shortcut where you can just be beautiful wherever you go. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of the stuff we're covering, it's, it seems almost conflicting. You kind of came up through this like boss bitch air, you know, the the height of it in a, in a man's world, essentially. And we are all a bit, you know, we're ancient and geriatric on this panel. So we came up through this time where you did have to try and fight like a man. And it was, a, it was a bit more of an aggressive feminism. And now I'm seeing this big blowback where, you know, there's the trad wife um, rhetoric that we hear constantly and that you're pr pretty much dusty and done at the age of 30. And <laughs> <laughs> like MK, I have had many lives and I am a late bloomer. I had my first child at 42 years old and it it's um i i feel bad for women who get this messaging like go find somebody to take care of you and just give up before you even get started because for yeah. me like you my 20s i had a box you know side table out of a box and a blow up mattress and that that struggle and hustle really defined helped me find myself and it also helps me really identify with people who are struggling and trying to make it on their own because I've been there. I've been too broke to buy shampoo. And right. I've I've also been in a situation like her where I had everything taken care of. And I remember being more depressed and lost and than I ever had been yes. in my life. 
in yes. that situation. And I remember looking out at the Mediterranean and thinking like, this is rock bottom. Even though it sounds ridiculous, it really was an internal, I had completely lost myself. Mm. And this just kind of, in, in some ways, this article sounds a bit like a cope. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, By the way, the, the, the guy point, she married is only 37. Like he's only 10 years older than she. She talks about him yeah. like she's I found this 60 year old yeah, sugar daddy 50. at age 20. Yeah. It's not what happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what were you going to say, MK? No, the, the pendulum just swings too hard in our cultural conversations, right? So it has to go from boss bitch to like, and that does, that did devalue some of the work that women did at home raising children. And I do mm-hmm. want to send the message, um, but it's different than the, the trad wife thing, which is like, I got married. I had a partner. I raised these kids. I enjoy it. Like this yeah. is part of the great adventure of my life. It wasn't the end of joy. Um, and also it's coupled with some other things and some independence and, and things that I want to teach my children. Also the idea that you have to be pretty to enjoy the beauty of God's earth uh, <laughs> is so sad. Yeah, It's so sad. You've got your whole life. It is a privilege to age, to get yep. to the, to the later yep. years Enjoy what is in front of your eyes the whole time. Grand Canyon University, a private Christian university in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, believes in equal opportunity and that the American dream starts with purpose. Change the world for good by putting others before yourself. Whether your pursuit involves a bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree, GCU's online, on-campus, and hybrid learning environments are designed to help you achieve your unique academic, personal, and professional goals. With over 330 academic programs as of September, GCU meets you where you are and provides a path to help you fulfill your dreams. The pursuit to serve others is yours. Let it flourish. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.